Today we do our final review of the Brawler 64 gamepad from Retro Fighters. This review has been long in the making since the Brawler 64 launched last year with a remarkably successful Kickstarter campaign. I first received my Brawler 64 around March of 2018 as a Kickstarter backer. Since I received it, the Brawler 64 has been exclusively used as my main N64 controller. By this point, I've put in hundreds of hours in over a hundred different games, and spoiler alert, I'm a huge fan of it. Since the initial Kickstarter, Retro Fighters has released the Brawler 64 to the public. After fixing a design flaw I'll touch on here in a bit, they've launched another successful Kickstarter for fantastic colored versions of the Brawler 64, and finally released those colors to the public last month in January 2019. While my review covers the original Kickstarter backer edition gray controller, friends and research of my own have shown that they're the same between the gray and fantastic editions. Well, minus the design flaw, of course, but I'll, again, touch on that in just a minute. When I first got my Brawler 64, I was immediately taken in with the N64 theme they had going on with the box. The controller takes center stage with a yellow background, but over on the right we see that familiar red stripe covering part of the image. For North American N64 owners, we see this same stripe adorn the boxes of both games and accessories, making it a nostalgic touch I really like. The rest of the box is pretty standard, with the top and one side bearing the Retro Fighters logo, the other side having another render of the controller, and the bottom showing a UPC code. The back of the box also gives details about how the Brawler 64 is different than N64 controllers that came before it. Opening the Brawler 64 box up, we are greeted with a nice plastic housing for the controller and the user manual. The manual covers basic usage including how to use the controller and which N64 accessories are compatible with the Brawler 64. The manual also includes a brief snippet about Retro Fighters and a thank you message to all buyers. There is also customer service info as well as where you can find Retro Fighters on social media. On the last page of the manual, all Kickstarter backers of the $45 and higher tiers are also listed in a special thanks section. Yes, I did back this tier, so my name is included. The first thing about the Brawler 64 that draws immediate attention is the form factor. Gone is the three-pronged approach of the classic N64 controller replaced instead with a traditional controller layout reminiscent of the Xbox One or Nintendo Switch Pro controllers that is comfortable to hold and use for long play sessions. The shell is made of smooth, sturdy plastic and the colors of your purchase. I found it to be very strong and able to handle tight grips and various punishments without a hitch. Some might find it to be too light in weight, but throw a rumble pack into the rear port and weight concerns should be quickly alleviated. The thumbstick uses a domed cap and has a great amount of resistance when being pushed, which is to my personal liking. Base buttons are larger than on a traditional N64 controller, making them easier to press. They also have a good feel on each press and they aren't overly clicky. Shoulder buttons are similar to the face buttons, but might be a bit too squishy for some players' tastes. A second Z button has also been added to the right side of the controller, so players can choose either side for using the input. This makes shooters like Goldeneye more familiar for modern shooter fans, as you can fire with the right Z button instead of the left. For whatever reason, the Z buttons are on a spring hinge, like a pressure-sensitive trigger, which doesn't make a ton of sense because the button is digital. For the original backers of the Kickstarter project, there was an issue when it comes to the left shoulder button. While pressed, the left shoulder button can be felt moving as you move the thumbstick around. On an original N64 controller, the left shoulder button was never meant to be used while using the thumbstick. Instead, games that relied on the left shoulder button would use the D-pad as the main input method. With the redesigned layout of the controller and games that feature remappable buttons, the L button may see more use now than in the past. Thankfully, outside of it being slightly noticeable, it never caused issues during gameplay for me, and was made into a much bigger issue on the internet than it really was. It's unfortunate such a flaw made it past internal testing and into the final product, but at least the team at Retro Fighters made it right and gave all backers a free replacement L button to swap into their controllers. Seriously, the issue was really such a non-issue, I didn't even bother taking the time to have replacements sent out to me for my four controllers. The L button issue was also fixed before any retail controllers went on sale, so this won't be an issue for anyone looking to pick up a Brawler 64 in 2019. I would also like to take a moment to point out that after a year of fairly consistent usage, I have noticed no significant wear on the controller I use versus the one I unboxed just a minute ago. An interesting added feature for the Brawler 64 was the inclusion of a turbo button. The turbo button can be mapped to any of the face or shoulder buttons, allowing for rapid firing of any of them. I occasionally use the turbo button on the A button during a quick playthrough of Star Fox 64 when I'm wanting to spare my thumb the strain of mashing during certain boss fights. 
To turn the turbo feature off, all that needs to be done is a quick press of the clear button. Now it is time to talk about what matters the most. How it feels to play games with the Brawler 64, and after a year of usage in many different games, I'm happy to say it is great. Buttons respond well to inputs and repeated inputs without a hint of any drop. Turbo mode has been a blessing on my thumb when I'm just not feeling up to spamming, and Z buttons on both sides of the controller have made it that much easier to play shooters like Goldeneye though I still find it odd to have them be on a spring. And it has required some learning to be able to properly execute a left barrel roll in Star Fox 64. The D-pad is handled really well for games like the new Tetris and Kirby 64, allowing for accurate input and precision. At no point have I been pressing one direction and have another somehow slip in. Now for the thumbstick. Oh yes, the thumbstick. This is the piece that makes or breaks any N64 controller. The standard N64 had an interesting range of motion that has never been truly replicated on a third-party controller, and the Brawler 64 is no exception. It does come relatively close, but if you're used to the real deal, you will notice the extra sensitivity in each directional movement. This added sensitivity is not necessarily a bad thing, however, as it does allow for faster turns and movements depending on how a game was designed to handle input. It will take a moment to really get a feel for it though, especially in shooters. For flight games like Star Fox and Rogue Squadron, however, it felt great from the first moment. I was also able to easily pull off the quick spin attack in Ocarina of Time, which has had issues on other third-party controllers before. Honestly, there is very little I can find to criticize about the Brawler 64. The L button problem was never really a problem, and Retro Fighters quickly made it right before the controller ever went on sale. The controller can't use transfer packs, but, I mean, oh well, no third-party controller I've ever used has been able to either. The only thing I really take issue with on the Brawler 64 is the Z buttons and its spring design. The button isn't analog, so don't treat it as such. Makes it annoying for multiple presses in games that require it, like my aforementioned Star Fox 64 example. Speedrunners might also take issue with the analog stick range, as it could mess up inputs that require real N64 range. Retro Fighters has made a very solid replacement N64 controller with the Brawler 64. I have played over a third of the N64's total game library with it and have yet to find a single deal breaker. The performance is just there where it counts. The redesigned layout traditional of modern controllers will probably please many, but it's also just comfy to use. Outside of speedrunning, I could see no reason any N64 fan from the casual to the diehard enthusiast wouldn't enjoy using a Brawler 64. Thank you all so much for watching my definitive review on the Brawler 64. Uh, again, took a long time to make this review, but it has seriously been a blast. I can't say enough good things about this controller. It really is a great redesign of the original, and I'm a fan of the original. So, thank you all again for watching. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, like, dislike button, just depending how much you like this review. And if you're interested in trying out a Brawler 64 for yourself, I do have an Amazon affiliate link down below where you can pick one up. And it also has the added benefit of helping out my channel without any additional cost to you guys. So appreciate you checking that out. Thanks again for watching. Until next video, game freaking on, have a wonderful day, and we will see you all back next time.